want to welcome you to our Sunday evening service. We just want to begin this evening by singing the song, Just to Be Close to You is where I want to be.
scriptures taken from the back of our hymnals, number 18, and it's entitled God's Word. And it reads tonight, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will delight myself in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes, I will not forget thy word. Thy hands have made me, and fashioned me, and give me understanding, that I may learn of thy commandments. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And we thank God for the reading of his word and for his word that we can lead to for all guide and direction that we, we ever need in this life. And this time I just want to ask Sister Mandy, she can just come and share a word of testimony with us. So let us know.
the presence and the anointing of the Lord and bringing greetings again to all our viewers and locked on Laura and Jimmy, Good, Ram Lucha, Vanny and Simran, all others. Uh, please send in your prayer requests and we're remembering you in prayer. I invite you to turn in your Bibles for the message this evening. It's coming from the book of St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Verses 36 through verses 44. For all message, ready or not, here I come. But of that day, and I won't do it, no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, Marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house have known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, he would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man coming, ready or not, here I come. That's the words of all our Father. We thank you for today has been such a blessed day. And we can gather again for the evening's message. And we pray that our hearts will be open and receptive there, Lord. We thank you, dear Father, for speaking to each and every one. Maybe there might be someone out there that needs their Lord to be ready. In fact, all of us need, need to be ready. But there are someone who have never trusted in Christ. Maybe someone who have backslidden and gone away from the Lord. This evening might be their evening for restoration. Thank you for blessing the message in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Praise God. Well, there was an elderly Christian lady, and she attended a conference gathering. For her, it was the first time really to be mixed with Christians of other denominations. So this really blessed her and opened her eyes to the richness of Christian fellowship. So she especially liked when the preacher suggested instead of using the normal greetings, why not use one polarized by the early church? So he pointed out that the first Christians were so eagerly awaiting the return of the Lord that they used the word Maranatha and um, it's um, um, Aramic but it also is uh, mixed with Hebrew as, as well and so Maranatha, uh, the word means the Lord is coming. It's only one place you would find that uh, in the New Testament, the book of uh, 1 Corinthians actually chapter 16 and verse is uh, 22, the word Maranatha. So the elderly lady took this on board and the next day uh, she went around greeting everybody and she met them with the words, marijuana brother, marijuana brother. <laughs> she, she totally misunderstood. I guess everybody was surprised at a Christian gathering of one of the members uh, is saying marijuana, brother, not marijuana. <laughs> Trying to push drugs. And that Christian meaning wouldn't go down well at all. Glory to God. But remember that. The ceramic word. Yes, Maranatha. The Lord is coming soon. Amen. Praise God. I believe that firmly with all my heart. Amen. Praise God. And if you are a Bible believing Christian, you would believe that also. Amen. Glory to God. If you have read your Bible, if you know your Bible, you will know that this is true. That the Lord is coming soon. Amen, somebody? Amen. The second coming of Christ is imminent. It is right at the door. 
The world tonight also be encouraged, brothers and sisters. The world will not be ready. That's what that's what Jesus said. The world will not be ready when this event take place. Sadly, too, a lot of people in the church will not be ready as well. Just say the Lord would have come tonight. How sad it is that most of the church people are not in the house of the Lord. They are somewhere else. Tell me, if people were really ready for the Lord, would this be the case? If people were ready for the Lord, would the prayer meeting be with just met with empty pews and empty chairs? Of course not. Of course not at all. If people were ready for the coming of the Lord. But the truth is, the Bible says He will come in a time when they are not looking for Him. He will come in a time that they least expect Him to come. That's the time that the Lord is going to come. I think folks that uh, we are right for that event because the world certainly ain't looking for the coming of the Lord. And that's the absolute truth today. The world right now in our country, a lot of people are looking for carnival. That's what they're looking. They can't wait to, to be like sheep and goats in a pen that they built for them. That's what they're looking for, my friend. But certainly they are not looking for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Whether you are ready or not, He is coming. Listen, the readiness of this world is not going to stop the Lord from coming. I want you to know that tonight. It is not contingent on whether people are ready or not. No, He is going to come and no one is going to stop that coming. Amen. Amen. I tell you, man can't stop it. The devil can't stop it. The demons in hell can't stop it. Glory to God. He is coming. And so you got to make sure tonight, you who are listening, that you are ready for the second coming of Jesus. The story is told uh, quite some time ago. That Mount uh, St. Helens became the object of concern uh, as it started sending puffs of smoke uh, hundreds of feet uh, into the sky. And so every piece of evidence that time, scientific evidence uh, that was collected in the labs uh, and on the field uh, predicted that this volcano is going to erupt. It is going to erupt real soon and it's going to erupt with real fury. So there was warnings all over. Loudspeakers on patrol cars, even helicopters were used. Warning, warnings all over. They used the television, the radio as well. People were announcing it all over. Warning, warnings about the eruption, the impending eruption of this uh, volcano. There were people, lakeside villagers, people that lived around the area. There were tourist uh, camps as well too, uh, hiking trails. Uh, and these people heeded the warnings and so the, the place was, was empty. And so, nevertheless, uh, there was a man, and his name was Harry. And so Harry was a very adamant person. He said, he ain't moving. He ain't budging at all. He said, listen, I am a caretaker of the recreation of Lodge here on this lake. Um, I've been here for a long, long time. And so I tell you something that I ain't leaving at, at all. Though I ain't moving at all, even though the mount now was enshrouded with smoke. I mean, all the signs were there. This thing was gonna blow. It was gonna blow, blow any moment. But he said he ain't moving. He ignored the warnings. And so he was interviewed on television. And Harry grinned and he said, listen folks, nobody knows this mountain like Harry. Yes, sir. And this mountain, I have been here so long, this mountain there don't blow up on Harry. No sorry, it's not going to happen at all. But in May 18th of 1980, as boiling gases beneath the mountain surface bulge and buckled the entire landscape to its final limits, Guess where Harry was? He was cooking breakfast. 8.31 a.m. that particular morning. 
And while he was preparing breakfast, lo and behold, the mountain exploded them. There was a concussive waves of heat traveling faster than the speed of sound. This came, I tell you, suddenly, suddenly, and it flattened everything around. It flattened Harry as well too. Everything for a radius of 150 square miles. That's a large, large area that was totally flattened by the eruption of this volcano. Here was Harry. He said, this volcano ain't gonna blow up on me. I have been here too long for this uh, to happen. And I know this mountain, I know this volcano more than everybody else. Never mind the smoke. Never mind what others are saying. Never mind these warnings. It will never blow up. I've seen this happen already. And it has never blown up. But Harry was mistaken. Because on that morning, it did blow up. It healed him. It leveled everything. Why? Because this man ignored the warning. And because of that, he paid a high price. He paid the price of his own life. Folks, I have been signaling warnings from this pulpit for quite some time now. Since this pandemic began a couple years ago, I have been strategically preaching, yes, about preparing yourself to meet God. I've been preaching about the signs of the coming of the Lord. I've been preaching about Enoch and the rapture. And even uh, for the number of Sundays gone by, you have been listening to the message that I have been uh, sharing with, with you. The unfolding of the signs of the time so that you would know where we are and you would know to prepare yourself. And I say to you all tonight, uh, if any of you, if any of you, you are left back behind when the rapture takes place, uh, I want you to know you have been warned. If any of our members here have been left back when the rapture takes place and you are ushered into the tribulation period, you have been warned. If any of you here have been left back from the rapture and now you enter into a time that you are forced to take the mark of the beast, be known that you have been warned. And you have been properly warned from behind this pulpit. I have not at all held back in the preaching of the word of God. I have stepped out as it were in my preaching. I'm not preaching to be popular because this is not popular preaching that you hear today. The kind of preaching that you hear today is designed so that people will be comfortable and pews can be filled in churches today because people can be comfortable in their sin, in their worldliness. They can put on a form of godliness. They can put on a church clothes on Sunday morning and after that, that's the end of their Christianity. They go about their normal lives for the rest of the week, indulging in every single thing. But folks, I say be warned to all those people when they are left back from the rapture. And now they are forced to worship the beast. Yes, and the image of the beast, they are forced to give obedience. Be warned tonight, brothers and sisters, because the coming of the Lord is sure. Whether you are ready or not, the Lord is coming. He is about to make his appearing. I trust this evening that you are ready for it. The Apostle Paul says that we are to encourage each other, one another, as you see that day that is fast approaching. He says, furthermore, in the light of the return of Christ, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. One of the things that is designed to keep you until the coming of the Lord is regular church attendance. And I say that, folks, uh, regular church attendance, uh, it is going to be an invaluable help to keep you in line and in check uh, and ready for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, make no mistake, that is why Hebrews 10.25, uh, it's there, be and bold. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, as you see the day approaching. Notice, as you see, as you observe, 
You got to be observant. God does not want us to be ostriches burying our head in the sand, pretending that everything is okay with this world, and pretending that we are going to get back to normal. See, everything is going to be all right. COVID is going to be okay. It's already dying off. It's going to be okay. We're going to go back to our normal life, folks. Um, I mean, listen. Don't be lulled into this thing. Things uh, are going to get much worse than it is. That's what the Bible tells us. Uh, just prior to the coming of the Lord. Uh, yes, and then the worst uh, is about to take place. Uh, and so with this knowledge, the Apostle Paul says, uh, with the knowledge that the King uh, is coming, despite uh, of what uh, you might be going through as a child of God, uh, listen, God says, uh, be strong, hallelujah. Know that your afflictions, know that your persecutions, know that your troubles, they are only here for a short while. They are short labor. The pains of this life, the disappointments on this life, they are short. Do not exchange it for the eternal weight of glory. Isn't that what the Bible tells us? Um, that the light afflictions that we go through. Yes, sir. the Bible compares all the troubles uh, that we as Christians as light, uh, as light uh, in comparison to what God has uh, for us, uh, ready in store for us, uh, the riches and the glory of heaven. Folks, what we are going through is nothing in comparison to our reward. Our rewards are much greater than our labors, amen. Praise God. I mean, you might work for somebody and um, they, they have determined out the goodness of their heart, not just to give you a, a day's pay, but they decide, uh, listen, they are going to give you a month's pay for a day's work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, that is so fantastic. Amen. You rejoice. This is what God is saying. For the work that we work for Jesus upon the planet Earth, for the labor that you labor, listen, your reward exceeds your labor. That is why we encourage children of God. If you think that God is asking you too much and asking too much of you, you think that God is too demanding, wait till you see the rewards. Wait till you see what God has for you. Hallelujah. It cannot be compared. God will reward you a thousand times your labor. God will reward you a million times your labor. A billion times your labor. In fact, folks, we cannot put in too much labor for God. We can never do it. When you get up in glory and you see what God has in store for you, you said, I thought my toil was too much. I thought my struggle was too much. I thought God was asking me for too much. Now I have seen the glory. Now I have seen what God has for me here in heaven. I realize, amen, that my wage is much, much more, amen, than what I put out upon planet Earth. It is nothing, nothing in comparison. So don't ever believe that God is asking too much of you. God is not, folks. All he's looking to see is those whose hearts are loyal and the reward is going to be so great, praise God. He will return and we will meet him in the air. That's what is uh, spoken of in the book of Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4. When the trumpet of God sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, those who are alive in Christ will be immediately snatched away, caught up uh, to be with the Lord in the air. And so sh shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, what God is saying, listen, uh, you make sure that you are ready for when that time comes. Uh, because you do not have a moment to, to get ready. You do not have an hour to get ready. You must always be ready. Night or day. Sunday or Monday. It don't matter at all. Monday or Friday. It don't matter at all. Glory to God. It could be whatever holiday we have in our calendar. It don't matter at all. Hallelujah. What Jesus is saying. Listen. I will come in a time that they do not look for him. Think about it when if Jesus come on Carnival Day, what will happen to all them goats and napkins that they built for them? <laughs> well, could you imagine what will happen to them, folks? That is going to be such a sad, 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 sad thing. Hello, somebody. And the masses that are gathering for these things, it is going to be such a terrible thing. It's just like when they rose up to pray in the book, you read it in the Bible. 
and, and after the great exodus and exodus 32 uh, you will read that uh, Moses went up in, into the mountain to receive the ten commandments uh, and they said that he is something's happened to him he's probably dead and, and so they uh, had Aaron to make a golden calf and they got down to worship that calf uh, and the Bible tells us the rose of the play. If you look at the word play, you see it means every sensual thing that you can think about that was happening there. They were committing fornications. They were committing adulteries while worshiping. There was perversion, sexual perversion. The people were literally naked. You read the Bible, this is what is happening there. They were having orgies. It's just like carnival. This is what they were acting until Moses came down the mountain. When he saw it, they broke those ten commandments and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Come unto me. In a time that they will not look for it, that is the time that Jesus will come. There's a story from the 1800s about a young couple, William and Elizabeth. They were madly in love and engaged to be married. But Elizabeth enjoys planning for her future. William, on the other hand, knows that it's only a matter of time before he might be called away to see, to fight, yes, to fight various enemies in far out lands. So he knew it could happen at any time. It could happen before the wedding. It could happen during the wedding day. It could happen immediately after. He knew it. Elizabeth, how, of course, uh, she was only thinking of all the excitement about getting married. But indeed, he tries to prepare Elizabeth for this distinct possibility that one day he would have to leave. But Elizabeth really don't care too much about that, the notice. However, one day that call came. That call came. And so William is set out to sail on a Saturday. And so he prepares to leave. Elizabeth now is distraught. But William makes her a promise as he was leaving. And he said to her, I promise you, Elizabeth, that I will return for you. I will be back for you. I make you a solemn promise, Elizabeth, that I will return for you. And when I do, I tell you, I will keep my promise. I will get married to you. So William goes off to war. And Elizabeth is left to wait now for his return. Knowing that it will be many, many months before William returns. If indeed he returns at all because the possibility exists that he might be killed overseas in this war. So the months pass and there is no sign of William's. Shipper. There is nothing about Williams. News finally reaches Elizabeth that Williams' ship was lost in a storm. And there was no further news, no information after that. All she knew that his ship was lost in a storm. That's all she knew. And the battle, however, had been won at the same time. And the ship was on its way home only to sink on the return of that journey. Tragedy, tragedy. All of the battle was won. William was on that ship. Could you imagine how anxious he was to return to Elizabeth and to get married because he knew his bride was waiting for him, but the ship sank. Elizabeth remembers William's promise now to return. But as time passes, her life moves on. Ten years later, she meets someone else and she is married. Meanwhile, William was not really dead. No, but rather like Robinson Crusoe, he was alone on an island. Food was plenty on that island and so he was able to prosper on that island, which was something like paradise, if you please. And William made plans that he and Elizabeth will one day live on this paradise island, on this beautiful place. That's all he could think about, was bringing his bride to paradise, bringing his bride to this beautiful island. But what problem? No one knew that William was there. So William had no choice. He waited, and he waited, and he waited, looking for the day when he would be able to fulfill his promise that he made to Elizabeth, that I will want to return and I will get married to you. Finally now, 
Some 23 years later, the island was discovered. Long time, 23 years, the island was finally discovered. And William was able now to make his return to seek out Elizabeth for their emotional reunion. So he returns to her as promised, but much later than expected. And of course, Elizabeth's Elizabeth life has moved on. And so William gathers up his extended family, his brothers and his sisters and his nephews and his nieces uh, to immigrate to this island paradise. But what happens to Elizabeth? Elizabeth is left behind. Because why? It is because she did not keep up the part of the bargain, and that was to wait, to wait for her beloved. No, she got despondent in waiting. Yes, she gave up on this man. She gave up on, on waiting for, for William. She said that he is lost. He said, she said that he is dead. He ain't coming. So she fell in love with somebody else and got married. When he came, she was not ready for him at all. So what did he do? He took his immediate family and they all went to that beautiful island. Yes, sir, that paradise island. Only to the regret of Elizabeth. Elizabeth ever regretted that she did not wait on William. Because William now was having such a blast of a time with his family. Yes, enjoying this paradise island. And she was just left back behind. You know, our waiting for Jesus is just like Elizabeth waiting for William. You see, Jesus has promised us that he will return. But there is a war that has been going on. That is a battle for our souls. But Jesus won that battle, glory to God. But unlike William who been shipwrecked while returning, Jesus was not shipwrecked. No, Jesus is coming, hallelujah, to take those who are waiting for him, for waiting for his return to paradise, to the glories of the Father and to heaven itself, glory to God. He will take those only who are waiting and those who are watching for him and no one else, glory to God. Those who are not waiting for Christ will never be caught up in the rapture. You have to be watching, amen, for the Lord's return. Look around us, look at the signs, don't be blind. Look around us and see what is happening. How it comes that believers still are parading in coldness and in difference. How often now it is that most of the church ain't ready, folks. We just ain't ready at all for the coming of Jesus. Look at the church, how fragile, how divided, how broken up it is. Look at how people, how different they are now to the church and the Bible. Very few people today now are coming out uh, for worship. Tell me, do you think that the church is ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ? That is why I believe the time also. I've been sharing you signs this morning. I spoke about knowledge uh, that shall be increased in Daniel chapter 12 and verses 4. The Bible makes it very clear. Just before the last days, uh, yes, uh, that knowledge will be an explosion, a literal explosion of knowledge. Uh, and this is the time, of not a time in human history. Look at the technologies around us. Uh, look what man is able to do. Uh, knowledge has literally exploded. And she said, yes, uh, at the end of the age, uh, this thing is going to happen, glory to God. Uh, and so all these uh, are warning signs, even just like how we got those warnings signs and this volcano is about to explode. Yes, sir. But did he heed the warning? No, he did not heed the warning. I trust tonight that you are heeding the warning. Praise God. Not only we should be waiting for the Lord, but we should be also watching for the Lord. Amen. Watch. Be alert. Be vigilant. The Bible tells us because the Lord is about to come. Praise God. The Lord told us, Amen, that we, I 
as servants of the Lord should be watching and waiting for him. He pronounced a very special blessing on those that will do this. There is a difference folks, between waiting and watching. There is a big difference. You see, it is the story is told after days at, at sea. And this is concerning a small village in Scotland there. The skip of a fishing boat uh, was bringing his little craft back home. And as the boat neared the shore, the men gazed eagerly toward the dock. Why were they gazing toward the dock? It's because they were expecting that their loved ones would be waiting on the dock to receive them, praise God. It's just like you went abroad for an extended time. Yes, sir. And uh, at the airport, uh, your family is there, your wife is there, your children is there, your spouse is there, glory to God. They are looking at the monitor. The monitor says flight uh, X and X1823 or whatever it is, uh, is due to arrive momentarily, glory to God. They are watching that monitor. They know any moment now that plane is going to touch down, glory to God. They're looking at that monitor because that monitor will say, arrive, we're still in transit. They are looking at that monitor, glory to God, amen. Hallelujah. They are moving now, no sorry. Glory to God, forget about KFC, forget about pizza, because my husband, amen, has just landed. He's going to be coming out of immigration any moment now, glory to God. And I don't want to miss that, I don't want to be by the devil's man. My husband is coming out of customs there. You make him joke, that man went away for two weeks, I miss him so much. I have to sleep alone, I couldn't sleep without my husband and whatnot. You think I'm going to miss that at all? Forget the pizza, man. Forget the KFC. Forget the Royal Castle. Forget them donuts. Forget them doubles. I gotta be right here when you come to that gate because the first person, amen, that he must see, he must see me with my arms open. Praise God, amen. He gotta know that I'm excited to see him. He gotta know that I miss him so much. And I'm glad, amen, that he has arrived safely. Glory to God. You see, that is the difference, amen, between waiting and watching because some are waiting, but they're waiting home. Come on, somebody. That's what they're doing. They're waiting home. When you come, you welcome. And what a, but one is at the airport, amen, watching that monitor, glory to God, watching through them gates. I wonder, is that he, is that he? It looked like the bald head looked just like his bald head. Yes, the color of his skin looked just like it could be him. Is it really him? I can't wait, glory to God. That's the difference between one who is sitting down home and one who's at the airport and looking through them doors, amen, to see when he is coming through. Are you getting the, the picture here tonight between waiting and between watching? So, as the, 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 the boat near the shore, the men were eagerly gazing now. Yes, they were looking on the dock. They were looking to see their loved ones. And the skipper looked through his glass and identified some of the women saying, he said to his man, Bill, listen, I see your Mary all there. Yeah, Bill, I see your Mary, glory to God. And he said, Tom, he said, oh, listen, I'm seeing and I see your Margaret is all there. He said, David, I see your aunt uh, is out there. One man was uh, very anxious uh, because his wife was not there. So he left the boat with a heavy heart uh, and he pressed uh, his step up the hill, uh, raised to a light in his cottage. Uh, and he opened the door. His wife then ran out to meet him, uh, saying to him, Oh, darling, sugar, I have been waiting for you. And he replied, Yes, you have been waiting for, for me. But those other men had their wives. They were watching for them. Glory to God, sweetheart. And that is the difference. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, you are waiting for me sitting at home here. But these other women, glory to God, they were watching. Glory. They were on the dots. Amen. Watching 
for their husband return. Why won't you do that? Why won't you do that? It tells the difference, praise God, with those who are truly ready, amen. And those who are not, those who are excited about the second coming of Christ, and those who are not. It tells us, folks, about those who will be caught up in the rapture, and those who will not be caught up in the rapture. Don't be fooled. Two will be in a bed. The one will be taken and the other left. Two will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. So it is going to be when the rapture takes place. So many are going to be left back behind because they were not ready for the rapture. Are you ready for it this evening? I hope you say, Pastor, I am ready for the second coming of Christ. How can I be ready? The only way that you can be ready, you've got to have your garments washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You've got to have your sin forgiven. Because Jesus is coming for our church in Jude 24. He says uh, that he is coming for a church. Amen. Without spot and without wrinkle. That's how he's going to present us uh, to the Heavenly Father. Look at it in 24. Amen. Who is able to present us faultless. Uh, Faultless, the Bible says. Faultless, without a single flaw. Amen. That's our Lord Jesus. That's what his determination is. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Amen. When he presents us, for those of us who are watching and waiting for his coming, when he presents us before the Father, we are going to be absolutely faultless. There is not going to be one blemish in us. Amen. Not one wrinkle in our spiritual garments. Amen. Not one dot, not one blotch. Glory to God. We will be presented clean and white and pure and holy. Glory to God. Because after all, that's the only person that will walk the streets of heaven. Only people that will walk, it will be the same that will walk in the celestial city. Think about how beautiful that city is. Amen. Just a couple of days, I've, I've been reading about that city. Amen. As John saw the city, and it was measured before him. Whether it's literal measurement or figurative, glory to God, and how you take it, it is fantastic. You don't see no city like that in the world today. The Bible tells us um, it is 1,200 furlongs in length. That's equivalent to 1,500 miles in length. It is, it's, it's 1,500 miles in breadth. But that is not uh, the how um, the, the enormity of it. No, the enormity of it is is, is in height, fifteen hundred miles high as well. It's a perfect cube. The Bible says, "Glory to God." Two hundred and sixteen feet. The walls are twelve foundations. Amen. Made of precious stone. Jasper, chalcedony, emerald, sa sapphire, amethyst. I mean, topaz. I mean. Beautiful, beautiful, glory to God, amen, hallelujah. Twelve gates, um, and each gate made of one solid pearl, three on each side of that city, amen. Twelve gates, glory to God, hallelujah, amen. Representing the twelve apostles, thank you Jesus, amen. Oh, glory to God, hallelujah. The Bible says the favorite, pure, the goal is like glass. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It, it's tiring to think about the magnitude of that city. Glory to God. Folks, uh, that city has the capacity to take billions and billions and billions and billions of people, each having acres and acres uh, of, of space, if you put it that way. Check it out and look at it uh, and so on. Oh, I tell you, glory to God. Hallelujah. It's so fantastic. And that is just that one city. There is so much more. He's making a new heaven and a new earth as well. The Bible tells us together with the entire galaxy. Oh, glory to God. All for us. Thank you, Jesus. So I ain't worrying about this world. I know this world is going to melt with fervor and heat. You can do what you want. This earth is going to be burnt up. It is going to be destroyed. Regardless of what skeptics are saying today, the earth has always been. It will rejuvenate itself. Well, if there's no rejuvenation, reju amen. When the Lord is finished with it, my brother and sister, it will melt. It will burn. Second Peter.
Peter chapter 3 verses 5, the old order just trod out but this one is reserved by fire. Everything, everything in this world, the glory and the splendor of man is going to melt and it's going to come to nothing. New York is going to melt. Manhattan is going to, Tokyo is going to melt. The Emirates, everything, glory to God. Hallelujah. The places that people so long, listen, they're going to melt flat now. All the glory of man will come to ashes. That's what it is going to be. But when that is happening, I ain't going to be on the earth. But Amen. praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when the tribulation takes place, and you see, Amen, those seals broken, those seven seals broken, and at the breaking of the seventh seal, there are now seven trumpets. And this is happening, folks, in the middle of the tribulation period now. Read your Bible, and you will see the plagues that are coming upon planet Earth. Men will wish to die. And death will flee from them because they will have to suffer. Suffer because they have worshipped the beast. Yes, and they have taken the mark of the beast that I've been talking about this morning. Read your Bible. That's not it alone. After those seals are broken and those trump seven trumpets are sounded, at the end of the seven trumpet, there are seven vials. Look at it. Oh my goodness, and you will see the kind of judgment that has been poured out upon the face of the earth. Suffering and pains as you have never seen, hunger and thirst, murder, hell literally has come upon the earth. The beast in Revelation chapter 9 tells us they, they have a horse's body, they have a face of of uh, a woman, the Bible says, hair like a woman, face of a man, teeth like that. Their, their, their tails are, are, are like scorpions, and when they sting someone, it lasts for six months of torment without people dying. They are going to invade planet Earth. They're going to come from the bottomless pit. As you know, your Bible, hell is in the core of this. Earth. Literally, when people die, they go right there in hell, the bottom, in the core of this earth is where hell is. That is going to be taken, according to Revelation chapter 20, it's going to be taken and cast into the eternal lake of fire, which is worse than the hell. No wonder why in Revelation 9, the Bible tells us when the angel received the key of the bottomless pit, when he opened the bottomless pit, there arose a smoke that came upon the entire earth, and locusts came upon the smoke, again, again, or testifying where hell is right now. It is in the heart of the earth, the core of the earth, and there it is, uh, where sinners are being tormented. As I am preaching here tonight, uh, you will find a rich man. Uh, yes, uh, Luke chapter 16, uh, you will find the pharaohs of the Old Testament. Uh, you will find Belteshazzar. You will find them all there, Judas. Uh, you will find them all there, the Herod, uh, who killed uh, um, James uh, and then apprehended Peter. You will find them as eating up worms. Uh, I share that with you. You will find them all there. And all those who have rejected Jesus Christ, uh, they are suffering right now in the heart of this earth uh, with fire that will not go down, fire and brimstone, when the worm dieth not. Uh, read your Bibles, glory to God, and you will see what Jesus had to say in Luke 9 about a literal hell. Uh, there are many people, Christian science says, uh, it's not real, it's imaginary, it's all made up in your mind. Uh, yes, the Jehovah's Witness denies the existence uh, of an eternal hell. They say, there is no hell. Uh, one day when they find themselves, people like that, uh, when they find themselves burning, it's going to be too late. Uh, too late, too late, too late, uh, shall be the cry, hallelujah. But you're going to find me there. When the tribulation takes place, uh, and the mark uh, comes upon and people now have a mark to take the mark. By the billions will be taking the mark. It's no problem because why? Right now we've been prying up as I've been telling you. Yes sir, the world is, now we've been primed up. We have been, been pushed up into a bowl. I spoke about conformity. This is what is happening slowly, slowly. They are making us conform. Becoming accustomed to these things. So yes sir, so we have the introduction of all these things now that we're using. All these smartphones and this and that. When it now it comes now to receive the chip, people are going to take it by the millions. They will think nothing and nothing about it. We have been prime up for the mark of the beast where people say it's no problem. It's no problem. We will easily take that at all. But the Bible tells us that those who refuse to take the mark of the beast because they have turned to Jesus Christ in the tribulation period. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They make their stand with Christ. They're going to suffer the only. 
Many of them will be killed and beheaded for a witness of the testimony the Bible tells us. They'll pay with their lives because they're enemy of the state. The Antichrist will give out the command. Remember the new world system, the one world government. He will be in charge, the Antichrist, the beast and the false prophets. Yes, be in charge. The governments are going to listen to them. Every government will bow to them, to the wishes of the Antichrist. He will rule the world and he will give out that mandate. Take the mark or else you will die. I am not going to be here when that happens. Glory to God. Amen. Because the rapture is going to take place before. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready for it now? Bow with me and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you pray and talk to the Lord? If you have fallen away, if your love for Christ has become cold and indifferent, if you have allowed COVID to bring coldness upon your life. And I think folks are people saying, I have COVID and so I can't come to church. That story gets too old now. Unacceptable. That, that gets too old now. The truth, am I correct? That gets too old now. That gets too old now. You gotta come up with something new if you're looking for a new excuse. But one day you're gonna run up excuses, I guarantee you that. When you stand before God and you have to give God an account, you're gonna run out of excuses. Now is the time to make it right. Hallelujah. You hear the line and say, Pastor, I want to make sure that when the rapture takes place and I go to be with Jesus and heaven is my home, I'm ready to accept Christ as my Savior. Would you lift your hand if you're here tonight? You say, Pastor, here's my hand. I want to receive Christ for salvation into the life. Would you lift your hand if you haven't done that before. Would you lift your hand? I'm going to see the sinner's prayer just for those who are online who have not made a decision for Christ. Pray me right now, Heavenly Father. I truly repent of my sin and beg forgiveness. I now open my heart to receive Christ as my Savior. And from today onward, Christ is my Lord. He is my God. And I will serve Him. I renounce the flesh. I renounce the world. And I renounce Satan. And I will live for the Lord all the days of my life. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a good hand. A powerful word again tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. As we invite uh, the offering bearers to come, as we take up tonight's collection, praise the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand.
Sister Joyce and Gloria God, hallelujah. Amen. While she's coming, Wednesday night is our prayer meeting and Bible study. I want to encourage everyone to be here. Much, much prayer is needed. Much prayer, much power. Less prayer, less power. It's as simple as that. That's Amen. this Wednesday and youth meeting on Friday. Then Sunday morning, glory to God. Amen. We're having uh, a special Sunday morning service as uh, we have been looking at, uh, at Valentine's Day, which is the uh, Monday, uh, Monday the 14th is Valentine's Day. So there will be a message concerning that and then the evening, of course, and is exciting what has been planned. And so we have some things indeed to look forward to. Amen. So Joyce, would you lead us in closing prayer? Good night, everybody. Be blessed. You have a safe trip back home. See you then on Wednesday.